ladies and gentlemen. No, no, not ladies and gentlemen, but friends. You've been kind to us. So wonderfully kind that what I have to say to you now is not going to be easy. This was not only the last performance of Catherine, but also the last performance of Jane Drake. Oh. Yes, my husband and I are retiring from the theater. I'm sorry, but retiring from the theater was supposed to bring Mr. Drake on stage so that we could say our goodbyes together. Mr. Drake seems to have misplaced himself. <laughs> Poor Luke. I suppose he just couldn't bear to say goodbye. So I'll have to say it for both of us. Good night. Goodbye. And thank you. You certainly put me on a nice spot. Oh, now, don't get upset, Jane. This speech was swell. Well, Eddie, where is he? I don't know. Last I saw him was at your apartment with you. When did he get away from me? Just as we were getting into the taxi. He said he forgot his watch and he went back to get it. He promised he'd meet me here at the theater. It was my own fault. I never should have let him out of my sight. Oh, hello, William. See me making a darn fool of myself out there? The first darn fool thing you did was to marry him instead of me. Yeah. Good evening, Turner. Oh, Jane, I've been waiting for this opportunity for years. How about doing the town with me tonight? Oh, I'm sorry, William, I can't. But we're giving a farewell party at our apartment. Why don't you join us? But that's for your theater friends, isn't oh, it? Oh, they're broad-minded. They don't mind bankers. Thanks, but I can't risk it. Some other time, then, Jane. Sure you won't change your mind? No, thanks. Good night. Good night. Eddie, start looking. Put some bloodhounds on his trail, but find him. I did hope that darn fool would get here in time to cut the cake, at least. You know, he almost missed our wedding ceremony, too. Oh, Jane, we've had a lot of fun. Why this? Why this farewell to the theater? Well, Emma, seven years ago, to be exact, Luke and I were making an overnight jump from Duluth to Minneapolis. Mm, that's a tough one. And we had no berths. We had to sit up all night. Well, we got to thinking about all the things we were missing. And right there and then, we decided that someday, before we were too old, we'd take time out to live. Then six weeks later, when we got back to New York, we bought this. We ate hamburgers for six months to pay for it, but we got it. Everything else you see in this room came just as tough. But we knew where we were going. In fact, as we bought each piece, we knew exactly where it would stand in the house. Now, for instance, as you come into the living room, just to the right of the fireplace... What living room? What fireplace? The house was finished last month. Right in the middle of the loveliest farm in Connecticut. Has this house got a nursery? No, Emma. But we have three extra bedrooms, and they can all be turned into nurseries very quickly. You're thinking you have to leave the theater to have children. Why well, I've raised four children and never missed a cue. <laughs> <laughs> My dear Emma, you were not married to Luke Drake. You wouldn't have had time to raise a canary. Oh, eight performances a week, week after week, month after month, until you're absolutely worn out. And where is Mr. Drake all this time? Well, I find that out the night the show finally closes. He's been writing another play. He comes bursting in, throws it into my lap and says, Sweetheart, the best I've ever done. Run down to Atlantic City, grab yourself a day's rest and read it while you're resting. We start rehearsals on Monday. No, no, Emma. For Luke and me, a clean break is the only way. And we're not going to look at a theater again until we've gotten everything we want. Why, Luke, have you been up there all this time? Oh, hello, gang, princess. Oh, hello. I'm sorry, I, I got uh, detained with something. Uh, yes, I'll, I'll, I'll be right with you in just a minute. Excuse me, I'd like to use the phone. I got to call Eddie. Eddie, here I am. Remember me? I'm Eddie. Yeah. Oh, oh, there you are. Say, Eddie, look, I just called Mabel Chadwick. She's on her way over. I don't want you to haggle with her about money. She's the best full-blown blonde in the country. In the country? A lot of territory. But I grant you, she's quite a baby. 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 I've got it. Yeah? I've got it. You got what, dear? The final curtain speech. 
The what, dear? She says, and there wasn't one person in the whole of Linfield that thought a man would ever call me baby. You see, it, it thumbs the nose at all tradition, all the bigotry. You know Mabel Chadwick, don't you? She'd be good as Elsie, wouldn't she? Who? Elsie. Who in heaven's name is Elsie? Don't you remember six months ago the idea I had the two women, the struggle between them? I called the brunette Ruth and the blonde Elsie, don't you remember? Yes. Well, the blonde who plays opposite you is Elsie. Who plays opposite me? Oh, I forgot to tell you. I've been working on it. I just finished it. Look, you run down to Atlantic City for the weekend and get yourself a rest. You can, you can read it while you're resting. We start rehearsals Monday, but be careful of it, honey. It's the only copy I've got. Listen, kids, it's the greatest thing I've ever written. And what's more, dear, it'll be our first play in your own theater. My own... Th the Jane Drake Theater. Where did you get money to buy a theater? All your ready cash was tied up in the farm. Oh, I sold the farm. Uh, Miss Mabel Chadwick. Oh. Hello, Miss Chadwick. Wonderful. Wonderful. Come on, meet my wife. Princess, this is Elsie. You see what I mean? Isn't she wonderful? Well, that's thumbing your nose a tradition. Look at this door. Look what she did. She broke it. Maybe it can't be true. She couldn't have gone to Reno. It's a dream. Why, well, it's always been Jane and Luke. Us, we struggled together, we scraped together. The angels were smiling down on us. Well, they're laughing out loud now, all right. Well, I want Jane back. I'm lonely. Okay, pal, make up your mind. Exactly what is it you want back? Jane, your leading lady, or Jane, your wife? My wife, naturally. I'm lonely. I tell you, Eddie, she's gone. Something's gone out of me. I'm through. I'll never set foot in the theater again. Come in. Hello, Luke. Eddie. Hello, Eddie. Well, Luke, it worked out fine. Here are the sketches for Jane's gowns. Wait a minute. What is this? What are you talking about? Didn't you tell me to build your model of the new set? And you told me. Yes, yes. And don't you read the papers? Jane's gone. The whole life's cracked up. The show's off. Hey, Mike, what is this? I told you to build the stairs right down into the middle of the set. When Jane makes her entrance, I want her full face to the audience. Look at those sketches, Eddie. Look at that. He calls himself a designer. Too many ruffles for Jane. I said simple, simple. Now, wait a minute. Just to remind you, Jane is in Reno. And your full-blown Elsie Mabel Chadwick was grabbed up for another show this morning. She was. Well, who cares? He thinks I was going to do a show or something. What a set. Gee, Eddie, if you could see Jane moving around in there like I do. Yeah. It's against all the laws of nature. I wrote it for her. She's in every move, every line. I... I can't pass this show up. It's got to be done. Come on, don't stand there gawking. Change your stairs, Mike. Fix your ruffles. Bert, hurry up. Get going. Come on, come on. You heard me, Eddie. She's going to play it. She's got to for her own sake. And I love her enough not to let her toss her genius away. That's the way I feel about her, and that's the way I expect her to feel about me. You won't toss your genius away, don't worry. If she loves me, she'll do it. Don't you see what happened, Eddie? I was a fool. She was overworked and keyed up. It's like a watch. You wind and wind, and then you give it that one turn too many, and it snaps. Women are like that. She wanted a little rest and play, and I offered her a few days at Atlantic City. I should have given her at least a week. And then during the week, she'd read the play, and once she read it, Eddie... Get that, will you? Hello. Oh, hello, Kitty. Kitty Morgan of the Globe for what you. What does she want? Some dirt for her column, what do you think? Oh, tell her to... Wait a minute. They print her stuff in Reno, don't they? Reno's got a newspaper, they do. Hello, Kitty. Yes. Yes. Yes, Kitty. Well, I... I hate to talk about it. I'm pretty broken up about the whole thing. The show. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't touch that show now. Or any show. I'm through, Kitty. I... I don't know how to put it. Something has gone out of you. Get out of here. Don't come back until you bring me an Elsie. 118 pounder? All right, get me a full-blown blonde. Hello, Kitty. Uh, let me put it this way. Uh, something has gone out of me. Why can't I get 
this call through. No, no, I'll hang on. Boy, what a job. It's harder than writing it. Hello. Mrs. Drake. Well, put her on. Hello. Hello, Jane. How are you? Oh, that's good. Luke, the reason I called is that... Well, it's, it's rather chilly out here, and I wondered if you'd send my tweed suit on to me. Of course, Jane. Be glad to. And by the way, I happened to see a story about you in the Reno paper this morning. It doesn't happen to be true. Oh, uh, you mean about the uh, play being off? Yeah, I, I guess it is. But don't you worry about me, Princess. Did you say Princess? Y yes, I thought you did. Bye, Luke. Bye. Operator, get me to the airport. Quickly. I can take care of myself. <laughs> but there hasn't been a stitch of laundry set out of here since they left. And I'll bet you haven't had a cent of money in your pockets either, have you? No, I haven't. Now, there you see. <laughs> you irresponsible idiot. Oh, my sweet. Mm. Hey, darling, mm. when was the last time we went window shopping on Fifth Avenue? I took a carriage to the park. I don't know. Do you realize that neither of us can rumba? We've been missing things. You know, it's high time that you and I got acquainted, madam. <laughs> How do we start, huh? I'll tell you how. Mm -hmm. I know a nice, quiet place where I, uh, where uh, you can buy me a dinner. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, darling. Then I'll find a nice, loud place where we can rumba. How's that? <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, Luke, I am so glad to be home. Luke. What? Oh, Luke. You had the door fixed. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I darn near cried every time I thought about my breaking it. Oh, darling, let's face it. You're the most wonderful person <laughs> in the world. Uh. You can easily see there hasn't been a woman around this place. Huh? Look at that desk. Oh, I now, Princess, seen. don't you bother with all that. Don't bother. No, no, no. The, the, the drawer doesn't open. It's locked. Is it? Why, it's never been locked before. Well, you know how desk drawers are. I mean, that, that's why they make keys for them, you see. <laughs> Forget all that stuff. Come on, sit in your husband's lap, hmm? <laughs> Who cares about straightening up? Sweet. And tonight, it's sirloin steak for two. Luke, mm. have you been working on that play? Is that what you've got in that drawer? So that's what you think, eh? Just for that, I'll pry that drawer open if I have to wreck the desk doing it. No, no, Luke, please don't break it. Please don't, I believe you. If you have the slightest suspicion, huh? No, no, I haven't, I believe you. Come back here. Oh, darling. <laughs> darling. <laughs> Come in. Well, here she is. You call me to find a girl who could... Eddie, up the princess is back. 
Well, Jane, when did you... Uh... Well, you're back. Yeah, yeah, she's back. The princess is back. <laughs> what do you think of that? <laughs> Find a girl who what, Eddie? Just what were you going to say? Yeah, what are you going to say, Eddie? What do you mean, a girl? A girl who what? Well, you told you told me to go out and find a nice girl and uh, settle settle down. <laughs> so I did, Jane. Luke, meet Beulah. How do you do? How do you do? Oh, Jane, who'd have dreamed that, that Eddie would take this step? Hmm? I remember now, I said to him, go out and find yourself a nice girl and get married and leave the theater like us. And oh. darn if he hasn't done it. What do you know, honey? Old Sourpuss went and did it. <laughs> well, we haven't exactly done it yet. Uh, no, we haven't done it yet. We're going to have some great times, the four of us. we got to get together. How about tomorrow? Why, you... Luke, shame on you. Our dearest friend, Eddie, going to get married. I want to hear all about these lovebirds. Come in, Beulah, come in. Uh, uh, Jane, I... Jane, we can't stay just now. Uh, Beulah and I have to catch a show in, in Brooklyn. A show on Sunday? Oh, well, it's a concert. Eddie, you going to a concert. Well, I guess it's Beulah's influence. Yes, it is Beulah. She loves music. As a matter of fact, she's quite a musician. You know. Oh, how wonderful. The piano? Huh? Oh, yeah, piano. Oh. Yeah, great talent. Oh, oh, that's splendid. A musician. Now, you know, that's funny. Oh, that's funny, huh? I could have sworn she was an actress. <laughs> That's a laugh. What do you mean? Well, I hope you enjoyed the concert, Viola. Come on. <laughs> Gentlemen, <laughs> look at her. Whom do you see? Whom do we see? Oh, Viola. Elsie. Elsie? Uh, What's she talking about, Eddie? Elsie, I guess. Elsie, the character in your play. Oh, imagine that, the play. She, <laughs> she still thinks she's an actress. Come on. Now, That's there's absurd. plenty of time before huh? the concert. Let me take your coat. No, but you, I don't, I don't oh, want to be Oh, it's beautiful. It's a hurry. beautiful yeah. coat. I have one almost like huh? it, haven't I? Yeah, yeah. yeah you've got... Go and get it, will you? Well, honey, why should I get your coat? She doesn't want to see it. Now, you do want to see my no. coat before you go, don't oh. you, Beulah? Oh, I'd like to. Uh, some other time. Some other time, honey. Oh, I really would like to see it. Now, she wants to see it now. Go and get it, dear. There. Oh, it's very nice. Oh, lovely. Lovely figure. How much do you weigh, dear? 118. 118. That's what I thought. <laughs> now, you know I don't like to have you lie about your weight. It's 125, you know. Why, Eddie Turner? Well, don't be ashamed of it. I don't mind a little weight. Besides, I don't think you're fat. You're more sort of... Full blown. Yeah, full blown. Huh? What a lucky man Eddie is to come home after a hard day's work and sit down by the fire and listen to you playing the piano beautifully. <laughs> sit down, Beulah. <laughs> Play. Play! Mrs. Drake, please. What's her room number? Could I have your name, please? Mr. Drake. <laughs> One moment, please. I'll announce you. Mr. Drake calling Mrs. Drake. Mr. Drake calling Mrs. Drake. Mrs. Phillips. Mrs. Drake is not in. Mrs. Drake's not in. Uh, uh, thank you, little man. Operator, will you call Mrs. Drake back and tell her I'll wait right here for her to come in? So if she wants to go out, she'd better use the fire escape. Son, just, just drop it, will you? Drop it. Ah, Mr. Dudley. Oh, hello, Luke. What brings you here? What brings you here? 
You know, my friend, in every bad book, every rotten play ever written, there's always one very witty character who says, well, what the brings are you here? Now, see here, old man, let's not... Now, see it. here, old man, I like that what brings you here better. Shh, huh? Everyone in this lobby is staring at us. Let's not create a scene. Now, why not? I enjoy a good scene. Made my living creating them for years. Mr. Dudley in the lobby for Mrs. Drake. Mr. Dudley. Mr. Six Percent Dudley. Tell her Mr. Drake you're still waiting, too. Will you be quiet? You may not have any reputation, but I... Well, there's Jane. Yeah, and there's you, huh? All right, all right, I'll whisper it. I'll whisper it. You haven't got a chance with Jane. Can you hear that? You aren't worth her little finger. I'm not either. But the difference between you and me is I know it. And by the way, for years now, every time my back was turned, you were always there when I turned around again. And... Hello, Jane. Good evening, William. How nice of you to ask me to dinner. Jane, I want to talk to you. Shall we go? Well, the world's in a mighty fine state when a man can't even talk to his own wife. Another fella comes courting her before she's even divorced. What are you trying to do, Drake? I'm trying to carry on a little private conversation with my wife, mm, Dudley. Well, for heaven's sake, Jane, talk. Sure, let's go up to your room. No, no, let's no, I'd rather not. Uh, take my car. It's right at the curb. Well, that's very nice of you, William. You wait right here for me now. Yes. Much obliged, old pal, old kid, old stuff. Old stuff shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Well, when are you going to talk? You've come a long way from the Luke and Jane that stood before that small town preacher. Seven years ago, we were going to grab the world by its tail and twist it till it hollered, Uncle. And we did it together. Yes. What have we gotten out of it? I've had seven years, the greatest, most electrifying years of my life. Matter of fact, I can't remember any other years. Just the one spent with you. Just keep driving, Luke. Keep driving. What are you afraid of, honey? I want you to tell me something before we go any further. In mileage, I mean. Are you going to give up the theater? No. Please take me back. I won't give it up because it's us. Seven years of plenty, plenty of everything. Take that away and the seven years of famine begin. Without the theater, we'd just be a, an ordinary couple with all the petty bickering. You won't quit, Luke. There's, there's nothing more to be said. You won't quit either. Maybe you'll hook up with somebody like old 6% Dudley, wind up with a lot of little stuffed shirts running around the house. Just as sure as today is Wednesday, the day will come when that disease you've got known as theater. Today is Thursday, not Wednesday. All right. All right, Princess. I wish you luck. Anyway, will you do one thing for me? Will you read the script? I've never put on anything without your advice, and I... I can't read in the dark. Yes. No. That William, there's a guy for you. Comes according with an empty tank. Look, don't be just a critic. Do something. We can't sit out here all night. Well, there must be an auto court nearby, honey. Mm, there must be a gasoline station nearby, too. As a matter of fact, there is one right over there, see? Oh, yeah, so there is. <laughs> Aren't we lucky? Now, look, just put it in neutral, and then with a little shove, we can coast right down to it. Yeah. <laughs> Don't get up, Pop. Take it easy. Okay. Hey, how about some gas? Fill her up, will you? No. What do you mean, no? Gas is for sale, isn't it? Yep. Well, why won't you sell me? Can't. Why not? <laughs> Rita Hayworth. 
Look, Pop, what's Rita Hayworth got to do with my buying gas? Rita Hayworth pictures playing in Reno. Son's batty about Rita Hayworth. Son at picture show. Key to pump in son's pocket. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. Do you have to take the key with him? Don't trust me. Like a cabin? Nope. It's awful cold out here nights. We'll wait for your son right here. Won't be back till morning. Spends the night in Reno. I wouldn't be surprised if you'd arranged this. Oh, sure. I tracked old 6% Dudley's car all the way across country. Yes, sir. Found it right outside of your hotel and I punched a hole in it. Hole just big enough to have the gas drip out and empty right here. We'll take two cabins. Heh. Only got one. Then I'll take it. This way, ma'am. Thank you. Good night. Good night, Luke. Um, I'll, I'll just stay here until you finish reading it, Princess. Very well. Say it, Princess. There's something you don't like. Yes, there is, Luke. I, I, I don't like your quibbling about the parentage of the child. After all, oh, you're going to. I'm so have... glad you said that. That's one section that doesn't please me either. Yeah. Every time I get to it, I read it kind of fast to get by it. Mm -hmm. It needs rewriting. But go ahead, Princess. Go ahead. I think it's the greatest play you've ever written. You mean it? Yes. I think the part of Ruth is the greatest feminine role I've ever read. Well, then? I hope you get a fine actress to play it. Put in 10 gallons. That's 440 with lodging. I haven't any money. Well, now. Knock on the door. My wife will pay you. She's the first lady of the theater. Temporarily in retirement. <sighs> 440, gas and lodging. Pay him, will you, honey? Honestly, you are the most helpless creature. Oh, you're so right, Princess. Helpless. I'm sorry I haven't any cash. Here's my credit card. My wife. Sign this, please. Thank you. Isn't there anything you can suggest about my helplessness? I'm sorry, Luke. It's too ingrown. Now, you owe me $4.40, and I expect to collect it. Oh, sure, sure. Have old 6% Dudley figure up the interest. He may even advise you to hang on to it. But over a period of 20 years, you know it'll double itself. Hello, Betsy. Welcome back, Mrs. Drake. It's, it's nice to have you home. Thank you. It's nice to be here. Well, it's the same old place, isn't it? No, it isn't, madam. Oh, come now, Betsy. And you too, Alfred. Let's not be tragic about all this. Any mail? Uh, on the desk, madam. Thank you. Um, by the way, uh, any phone messages? No, madam. It's obvious Mr. Drake hasn't been living here. Everything is so neat and clean. Oh, I never minded picking up after him. Betsy. Oh, well, thank you for the piece that's missing here, Alfred. Oh, 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 you mean the piece that's, uh... That's right. Thank you. 
Virginia Cole. I'll answer it, madam. I'll fix some lunch. <laughs> Welcome home. Virginia Cole! Virginia Cole! Oh, sorry. I'm Virginia Cole. Go right in. Mr. Dredd is waiting. Virginia! That's the trouble with doors. Anyone can come in. Oh, don't get up, Eddie. Say, Lucifer, what is this silly story in Variety? You're not squawking about a little publicity, are you? No, I love it. But me in the drama, in a part intended for Jane Drake, Lars and Massey, why the audience laughs the minute I step out on the stage. Oh, everything is different now, hadn't you heard? Now we have comedians playing serious parts, and we have dramatic actresses getting divorced. Oh, okay, yeah, Virginia, yeah, but... I'll come clean. The part in that play is still intended for Jane Drake. Oh, a dual role. I play it, but I don't play it. That's right. Well, if I don't play it, I can play it just as well at home. No, no, wait a minute, Virgie, wait a minute. I want you to pretend you're going to play it, but you don't. Look, Lucifer, I realize you're a genius, but I'm not, so give it to me simple. Well, it's very simple. If there's one thing Jane can't stand, it's to see a good part, a part meant for her, murdered by miscasting. Now, wait a minute. I'm a funny woman, but I have my feelings. Well, now, baby here may not have murdered anybody, but I know a couple of spots where she died. Don't get me wrong, kid. I love you. But Mrs. Drake is here. <laughs> Who? Mrs. Drake. Jane. Yes. She is honoring us with a call. What do you think of the general now? Virgie, what do you say? At least it's different being fired before you're hired. Okay, for you, I'll do it, Luke. And I might add, I'll play the pants off it. Hello, Jane. How are you? Glad to see you. Thank you, Eddie. Then Ruth slaps her face, see? A backhanded blow. And that blow shows the audience what sort of woman Elsie is. See, what sort of woman do you strike with a backhanded slap? Oh, hello, Jane. I'll be with you in a minute. You can do it, Virgie. I know you can. You've got it in you. Oh, this is Virginia Cole. Virginia, this is my, uh, Jane Drake. Yeah. How do you do? You, you take it home and, and, and read it. And dream over it a couple of days, and, and then we'll, we'll have some more talks. All right, Luke, I will. By the way, congratulations, Miss Cole. It's a wonderful part. Oh, I know I have my work cut out for me, but with Luke so confident, and I've always said he's a bit of a genius. Oh, there's no question about it. And you're so talented. Thank you. So are you. Many's the time I've cried at your performances. Well, I've laughed a lot at you, so that makes us even. Well, I'll be running along. Goodbye, Luke, and I'm sure I can play the pen. I'll handle it all right. Nice to have met you. Thank you. So long, Eddie. Goodbye, Virgie. Sit down, Jane, sit down. Don't go away, Eddie. I want to talk to you. Great girl, that Virgie. Got the makings of a great actress. Luke, I... Now, Eddie, if for the part of the editor, I want Whitbeck. I know he gets big money, but uh, I gotta have the best. Luke. Uh, just a second, Jane. The best people for every part, no matter how small. Luke, I just dropped in Eddie. here to tell you. I'm selling the furniture. Okay, okay. Another thing, Eddie, if you... What? You th I thought you'd like to know. I'm selling the furniture. You mean our things? Yes. Oh, listen, you can't do that. Just think of all the hamburgers I ate to buy some of those things. If you lay them all end to end... I am not interested in laying hamburgers end to end. Or in the furniture. Under the circumstances, don't you think we ought to get rid of it? Yeah, I, I guess so. Under the circumstances. Well, since we agree, I... I think an auction would be the quickest method. You'll need the money, Luke. After all, it's a very, very expensive production. And with all the cash you got from the farm tied up in the theater, you... Have you any objection? No, no, of course not. That's what you really want to do. Very well. Uh, I'll attend to the auction announcements, the sale and everything. I've taken a furnished apartment on the floor above, so I'll be close by. Oh, thanks. Bye. Bye, Eddie. Bye, Dom. Well, General, how are things in general? Sold. 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 Everything is sold to Dinglehoff. I wouldn't have minded so much if it hadn't been a man named Dinglehoff. Say, who in heaven's name is Dinglehoff? Dinglehoff is the name, madam. Yes. Yes, you look like Dinglehoff. <laughs> I've always thought so. I look like my father, you know. You wouldn't care to sell that vase, would you? This vase? Mr. Dinglehoff has bought everything in the place. I was able to buy only this one thing, and now he wants this. Will you sell it? Not for a thousand dollars. Eleven hundred. No. Twelve hundred. Not if I were starving, Mr. Dinglehoff. What did it cost? 
Think we paid $25 for it? That's not very good business, Jane. Uh, Mr. Dingelhoff offered a big profit, a very big profit. Dingelhoff. That's the kind of man who buys all the things we walk our feet off to find. And where's Luke? At rehearsal. He doesn't even care enough to show up to buy his own desk, and it's the one I gave him when we were first married. And he gave me this vase. But that isn't why I bought it. I bought it because I didn't want Dingelhoff to get everything. Now, now, Jane, why get upset? I'm not upset, William, I'm not. It's just that what I was most afraid of is true, that's all. Here, there isn't a drop of real feeling left in him. Why, for that precious play of his, he'd steal the blankets off a shivering orphan. Well, William, here's my new home. It's, uh, very charming. No, it's not. It's just a place to hang my hat. That's what I like about it. It's a relief. There's nothing here I care about. No ties, no nothing. Just a lot of stuff that I can walk away from and never miss. If I want to move, all I have to do is put on my hat and go. And to see you standing there, a brand new face. Oh, what a relief that is. That's wonderful. You know something, William? I'm beginning to appreciate you. Your, your dignity and loyalty and, and dependability. William, I want to see a lot of you. An awful lot. You were out there for over an hour. What happened? Hold it. Emma, for three weeks I've been trying to tell you that you're shocked at Ruth's conduct. You're shocked and pleased, but you're hiding your pleasure. You're not supposed to be asleep, you know. Maybe my play is boring you. What am I supposed to be able to do? Stand with my back to the audience and tell them by the slope of my shoulders that my father is a carpenter in Cincinnati? Yes, and has a family of eight. <laughs> oh, that's fine. That's fine. I raise my voice just above a whisper and she breaks down and blubbers like a schoolgirl. That isn't what I was blubbering about. How can you expect us to stand here and rehearse when... How can you do it yourself when... When what? When what? Everybody seems to know about it but you, you silly... Playwright? The papers are full of it, but you're so busy yelling your fool head off! <laughs> Where's your paper, Eddie? Mm. Oh, give me a paper, will Back at eight, folks. We'll have the scenery for tonight's rehearsal, if any. Al, she's serving notice on you, pal. You'll never get her on your terms the sooner you give up. Hi, Eddie. Oh, Max. Hello, Mr. Drake. Oh, yeah. Hey, Eddie, keep away from Billy's place tonight. We're raiding it. Billy's? What's that got to do with me? Oh, that wouldn't be your grandfather they'd pour out of there every other morning, would it? <laughs> <laughs> well, wait a minute. Where is this Billy's place? How should I know? Oh, come on, stop stalling. What's the address? The third door down there, 841. Why? Hey, hey. Hey, hey, you better not tell them I sent you. They've been carrying me on the cuff over there for quite a while. No. Hello? H hello, hello, Jane. It's Luke. I, I just read the news. Congratulations. <laughs> uh, look, uh... Uh, I want you and William to come out and have dinner with me. Well, I'll, I'll tell you why. I'd just like to sit down with you like three civilized people. <laughs> I, I mean, me being civilized for a change. Oh, look, please, you've, you've got to give me a chance like this. Well, I'll even ask William myself. I'll tell him to meet us here at the theater, and the minute you both get here, I'll dismiss the company. Oh, that's fine. Thanks. What's William's number? Okay, I'll call him right now. Goodbye. What's that Billy's address again? 841. Hello? Hello? I'd like to speak to Mr. Uh, William Dudley, please. Mr. Drake. She's 
just coming in. Okay. Come on, sit down. Who's coming in? Quiet. Well, all right, kids, we'll, we'll take it from Virgie's entrance. Places, please. She's here. Who's here? The princess. Stay where you are. Pretend you don't see her. I'll have her up on that stage in five minutes. Let's get on with the business of the church bazaar. Well, it seems to me the first business we should take up is the business of Ruth. Well, the whole town's talking. Well, why don't you ask me what you want to know and get it over with? All right. Did you go out there because you heard the dog yipping? Or did you go out there in the first place to see the gardener? Yes. That's what we'd all like to know. Where is she? She just sat down the back row. You were out there for more than an hour. What happened? Yes, tell us. We're all interested. What did tell us all about it. Well, you've all made up your minds anyway, so I might as well tell you. I went out to see him, to tell him I didn't want him to go, but he's got to go because you want him to go. Ruth, it doesn't matter what I want. You're telling me what's good for me. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Virgie, this is simply dreadful. You are so bad, it's unbelievable. But now, slow down and stop bellowing. You're supposed to be a lady. I want you to bite, scratch, and snarl. Hey, but, but like a lady. Go ahead, try it again. Billy, it's a peculiar-looking place. Club of some sort? Oh, it's clubby, all right. It doesn't matter what I want. You're telling me what's good for me, what's proper and what isn't proper. You've been telling me that since I was three years old, and I'm sick of it. You've glared and scolded. Virgie, Virgie, wait a minute, wait a minute. You've glared and scolded. What do you think you're doing, calling hogs? Or is your voice changing? Now, you go puffing and loping around up there like about as subtle as a meat cleaver. If your brain could possibly stand the strain, Miss Cole, would you please try to... Aren't patrol wagons noisy? Bless them. All right, continue, please. You've glared and scolded and frightened me long enough. Now I'll tell you something you'll never forget. No, no, no. Eddie, why do I have to suffer like this? What have I done to deserve this? I give my whole life to the theater, and what do I get? A hog collar, a dummy, a skirt on stilts. <laughs> oh, you aren't crying. Don't kid me. Those aren't tears. You couldn't cry. You haven't got an emotion in your whole body. You ought to be ashamed of yourself jumping all over that girl. Oh, Jane, I didn't know you were here. Well, it's obvious she doesn't know what you want. Why don't you get up there and show her? With what, a blackboard and a box of chalk? Oh, Luke. I don't know what he wants, Mrs. Drake. You probably understand him. Won't you show me? Not even Mrs. Drake could show you. Shakespeare couldn't. Sarah Bernhardt couldn't. Lubitsch couldn't. I'll try, Miss Cole. You don't have to do that, Jane. She's just a little unnerved. She, she'll be all right in a minute. Well, maybe I can help her. That's more than you're doing. Uh, has anyone a script? I'll get you mine. Thank you. Hello, Emma. Hello, Jane. Good evening, ladies. Good evening. Hello. Hello. It's the gypsy in you, boy. Right there. Give me just a minute to let this over. Don't look now, Eddie, but I think that's William Dudley going bye-bye. I, I think I could try it now. All right, places, please. Let's get on with the business of the church bazaar. Well, it seems to me the first business we should take up is the business of Ruth. Well, the whole town's talking. Why don't you ask me what you want to know and get it over with? All right. Did you go out there because you heard the dog yipping? Or did you go out there in the first place to see the gardener? Yes. That's what we'd all like to know. You were out there for more than an hour. What happened? Yes, what tell us. Happen? We're all interested. All about it. Happen. You all seem to have made up your minds about it anyway. So I might just as well tell you the truth. I went out to see him, to tell him that I don't want him to go, but that he must go because you want him to. Ruth! It doesn't matter what I want. You're telling me what's good for me, what's proper and what isn't proper. Well, you've been telling me that since I was three years old and I'm sick of it. You've glared and scolded and frightened me all I can stand for. And now I'll tell you something you'll never forget. That gardener's going to stay. There's no law that can put him off the premises. It's a free country. And what I choose to do is none of the town's business. Oh, well, now, now, what do you think? That gardener's going to 
going to stay just as long as I want him to. And that's forever, because I love him. Ruth! Oh. Yes. And I'm going to marry him. Curtain! Uh, Very right. nice, Jane. Thank you. Thank you. I could never play that scene for you, but watch me play this one. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Drake. Oh, that's quite all right. Come now, Miss Cole, you try it. Me? Oh, I could never play that. I can't do it. Look, I can't play that. No, you can't. You haven't even tried. What do you think I've been doing for the past three weeks? I don't know, but it wasn't acting. I not only tried up in that stage, but at home in bed with my nightmares. Oh, no, Luke. I'm going back to those nice, restful four shows a day in vaudeville. You get yourself another baby. Miss Cole, wait. You signed a contract. I didn't sign a contract to make a sucker out of myself. You, you're not going to run out on me. Close all the doors. You do that and I'll scream so loud I'll have the cops in here. I'll, I'll get equity to rule you off the stage. I'll, I'll have you blacklisted. All right, then I'll go into burlesque. I won't have to act there. I won't have to say a word. <laughs> Miss Cole. Miss Cole, wait. Oh, Jane. Oh, I'm terribly sorry, Luke. I, I thought it would help her. Maybe she's right, Jane. She could never have played the part. Right. Thanks, just the same, Jane. Well, folks, I... I guess I don't have to tell you we're in a pretty tough spot. Not a chance to open a week from now. Maybe if we wrap it up, it's all for the best. You're a swell bunch, and you'll probably get better parts and better plays. Thanks very much. Good night. Good night. Good night. Come on, Jane. William will probably be along any minute now. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Look, there must be somebody who can play that part. You can't give up before you've looked. Well, what if I did find it? Take work and time. Gee, I can't postpone indefinitely. Oh. No, I'm going to forget it. She is tough on the troop, though. Take Emma, for instance. You know her. She, she never has a dime. Yeah, I know. Where's William? Yeah, that's right. Where's William, Eddie? Oh, he'll probably be along pretty soon. Well, I don't understand this at all. It isn't like him. No, this isn't like William. He probably got held up somewhere. Here, he always calls. He's going to be even a minute late. Let's go over to Tony's. But what about him? We can't just walk off well, and leave. Well, Mr. Drake. Oh, say, Tommy, look, would you mind waiting a minute? We're expecting a gentleman along with Mr. Dudley. He'll be looking for us. Would you tell him we've gone over to Tony's? Yes, sir. Now, look, I promised him I'd Tommy wait here for him. Tommy will tell him. Tommy will tell him. It's all right. Tommy. He'll meet us over there. Honey, you can haul that sign away with the scenery. We won't be needing it. It's an awfully nice sign. Such nice big letters, too. Yes. Luke. Huh? Suppose you had someone to play that part. Just temporarily, I mean, so you could keep the troop together and open as you planned. What do you mean? Well, you'd have time to find somebody and work with her until she could take my place. Your place? Well, I... Princess, would you do that for me? Now, now, don't misunderstand me, Luke. I haven't changed my mind about the theater. But, uh, temporarily, to help out those actors, I... Gosh, Jane, that'll be wonderful. Hi, Eddie. Hi, Mac. Hello, Mr. Drake. Hello, hi. Good evening, Mrs. Drake. Hello, good evening. Glad to see you back together again. I read a lot of lies about you in the newspapers. Well, Eddie, we raided Billy's place just like I told you. <clears throat> well, I'll see you again sometime, Mac. Boy, I... when you tap one of them places, you should see what comes rolling out. Yeah, I can just imagine. See you around, Mac. Everything from a boot black to a blue blood. Yes, sir. And this time, we nabbed a Park Avenue banker. A what? Yeah, and did he try to pull a new one? Ha! Said he thought the place was... Look out, Jane, we get wet. Get out. Park Avenue banker thought the place was a what? A restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> a restaurant. <laughs> Awkward, isn't he? Oh, stop worrying, pal. It's a cinch. We just apologize about old 6% Dudley, say we're sorry it was all a mistake. She promised to do the part, didn't she? Yeah, but that was before she had to get Dudley out of jail. 
She didn't get much sleep last night, you know. Is she usually happy in the morning? For the princess? Bright as a bird. If I will get you ten, she'll start studying her part as soon as I give her the play. Don't worry, Eddie. Like picking ripe peaches. Let's leave it to King Lucius the First. Lucius the Conqueror. We should have brought our armor. Cock. Why, the play and the break shall go on for seven more years. For seven times seven more years. Ah, uh, Prime Minister, ring the bell. Uh, <clears throat> help yourself, King. Ah, good day, good day, Alfred, my man. Inform your mistress that His Majesty and the Prime Minister have come to uh, chew the fat with her. Oh, Mr. Drake. What's the matter? Anything happened to Mrs. Drake? Yes, she's Mrs. Dudley. What? Well, this may call for a slight change in plan. Uh, she just phoned from Greenwich. She and Mr. Dudley were married there a few minutes ago. They're sailing for South America tomorrow morning. Mr. Dudley's going to open a branch bank in Rio. Uh, Mr. Drake, she's on her way back here to pack up her things. Then they're going to the Winston Hotel for the night. But she'll be back here first. Sir. Yes. The king is dead. Long live Mrs. Dudley. The first play I ever wrote in which I displayed any depth. See, something just went out of you. Get me a couple of character actors who never played in New York. Thought you said the show was off. This is another one. Wait a minute, I'm going crazy. Listen, Eddie, I'm crazy. Everybody says so, I must believe it. A sane man would say she's married, and that's the end. But I can't. Why don't we just get a nice little cell and make faces at each other, huh? Get me those actors. Now, I understand all this luggage goes straight to the dock, Pier 18. Yes, sir. All right, darling, we can start for the hotel just as soon as you finish. <laughs> yes, William, I'm almost ready. I do hope I haven't forgotten anything. I look around very carefully, Mrs. Drake. Uh-uh. Mrs. Dudley, Betsy. Oh, I'll never get used to it. Oh, Betsy, please stop sniveling. Can't you see that I'm happy? Happier than I've been in years. No. Well, I am. All right, Alfred, I think you can close this one now. Yes, Mrs. Drake. Uh, Mrs. Dudley, Alfred. Oh, I beg your pardon. Well, that's fine. Betsy, you can get Mrs. Drake's hat. I mean, Mrs. Dudley's hat. Her hat? Yes, her hat. I'll get it. I'll get it. Yes? No. Mrs. Drake? Uh, Mrs. Dudley. That's exactly what we've come about, whether she's Mrs. Dudley or still Mrs. Drake. What? Now, just a minute. Who are you? Collins is my name. This is my colleague, Mr. Pierce. How do you do? We are legal representatives of the Colony Insurance Company. We hold a trust fund in the names of Mr. and Mrs. Drake jointly. That's true. What about it? Well, the uh, fund remains intact, even in case of divorce. But if either party remarries, it is to be divided. Well, I remarried. Divided. Oh. Uh, what? That's the question. Is the marriage valid? Is it valid? Why, of course it's... By the way, I'm Mr. Dudley. Ah. Oh. Where were you married? In Greenwich. Ah. Oh. Did you check to see if a Reno divorce was acceptable in the state in which you were married? Naturally. We had the bank's lawyer's advice. <laughs> Bank lawyers. Harvard men. I'm sure everything was in order. Just routine, Mrs. Drake. Mrs. Dudley. Ah. Oh. Here's the marriage certificate. It's all in order. Oh, we don't question that. But was the lady properly divorced in the first place? I wouldn't have been married if I hadn't been properly divorced, would I? Well, Mrs. Drake, uh, uh, Dudley, naturally, there's Nevada and there's New York. But we were married in Connecticut. Then there's Nevada and Connecticut. Now, for full legal assurance, unless the party of the first... Wait a minute. I... Just what are you talking about? What he means is, when a divorce has been granted in Reno, we must have full legal proof it was in perfect order. Why wouldn't my divorce have been in perfect order? Well, we sincerely hope it was. But if we find anything wrong with your divorce while you're in South America, you will have committed bigamy. Bigamy? Just a moment. 
Don't I know you? Haven't I seen you somewhere before? I doubt it very much, madam. Doctor. Have you a brother who is a doctor? No. No, I'm sure of that, because I haven't any brother. Uh, Jane... Uh, William, this whole thing is preposterous. Albert, are the bags ready? We're leaving. Oh, wait, Jane. This, this needs a little thought. Why? Aren't you sure you're my husband? Oh, yes, but where there's the risk of, of bigamy? William! You too! Now, be reasonable, Jane. I'll call Eccles, the best divorce lawyer in town. I don't know a word of law, but I can smell something fishy about this a mile off. Madam, there is no place in law for a woman's nostrils. <laughs> Please, Jane, sit down. Where is Eccles? There. Good evening. You? Yes. Yeah. Well, quite a crowd. I must say you've got a nerve to show your face around here after making me spend a night in jail. Oh, I'm not the kind that holds a grudge, William. Oh, you're not. Oh, no. Grieving playwright comes to congratulate happy ex actors You wouldn't happen to know these two gentlemen, I suppose. I don't believe I've had the pleasure. Collins. Pierce. And Drake. And you wouldn't know anything about questioning my Reno divorce either, would you? Don't tell me that's what they're doing. Yes. Why? What for? Oh, just for the fun of it. These two gentlemen like to play Halloween all year around. Now, Jane, you've got no right to criticize them, even though it is just a technicality. I'm surprised at you, William, letting a technicality stop you. I'd have thought a gay Lothario like you would pick the bride up in his arms... in his arms and just carry her away, no matter what. They might do that in the theater, Mr. Drake. Now, William reminds me of the young man who wrote to his sweetheart and said, for you, I would climb mountains, swim floods, and pass through fire if it doesn't rain. Mr. Drake. Yes, dear. I have had seven years of your brand of comedy. Seven and a half. Seven and a half. No. And on this particular evening, it is entirely out of place. I'm sorry, but I'll have to ask you to get out of here. You mean I got to... Uh... Yes. Well, uh... Eccles. Eccles, thank heaven. Come in. Ha! Huh. Now, gentlemen. Uh, darling, this is Mr. Eccles. How do you do, How Mr. Do you Eccles? Do? Why, what you said, Dudley, that's the most preposterous thing I have ever heard. I'm sure it won't take a minute. Yes. Now, gent... Uh, right in here, gentlemen. William, I want you to take me to the hotel right now. You're acting like a frightened old maid. I won't leave here with our status up in the air. Bravo. Oh, Jane. William knows best. He's got to sort of iron out your status. Lucius Drake, author, man of imagination, cooks a brand new plot. Get his play done at any cost. Never mind anyone else's happiness, just get the play done. Throw in any kind of monkey wrench, raise a silly legal question, stall everything, but get the leading lady for your play. That's it, isn't it? Is that what you really think? Is that all you think it meant to me? Yes. Jane, Jane, uh, haven't you gone yet? Uh, Jane, we win if we can settle just one point. They claim that while you were getting your divorce, you left Reno to join him in New York. Yes, I did. And therefore broke your required stay in Nevada. But I went back and started all over again. I stayed the full six weeks. Can you prove that? Uh, y yes, I can. I have my Reno hotel receipts. I can account for every day. Excellent. Now, wait a minute. Yes, there they are. Oh, yeah. Yes, perfect. And there. I'm... Perfect. This is all we need. This will prove you are never out of the state of Nevada. Mm -hmm. Come on, princess. Think fast. One thing you never liked in the theater was a farce, and you're up to your eyes in one now. You're like a child. You know you married Mr. Technicality out of pure spite. You're so busy looking back to stick your tongue out at me that you, you don't see the well you're about to stumble into. The answer's in your hands, Jenny. Yes. Yes, it is, isn't it? Stop kidding yourself. I have. I've stopped kidding myself about you. You know, while I was waiting for William down in the police station about 6 o'clock this morning, I dozed off for a minute. I had a dream. 
I dreamed that I was arguing with you and that I picked up a knife and stabbed you. And when you started to bleed, it wasn't blood at all. What came pouring out of you was manuscripts and scenery and footlight and pencils. And right now, it isn't me you're thinking of, nor my marriage to William. It's that precious play of yours. Why, you'd see me burned at the stake for it. There isn't anything that you could say now that I believe, is there? Is there, Luke? No. It's nothing that you'd believe. Hang on. Billy, drop the curtain. Show's over. Actors. Yeah. Jane, you remember uh, Billy Wheeler? Played the doctor in the road company of Tornado? Hi, Jane. Of course. Actors. There must be something in the criminal code covering this, is there? I'm a divorce lawyer. Good night. Thank you, Mr. Drake, for the entertainment. Actors. Thanks a lot, fellas. Look up Eddie tomorrow. He'll pay you. It isn't very often you get your teeth into a good part. Ah, good show, but a short run. It's a great place, the theater. We can play at being anything. Doctors, lawyers, anything we like. Just a happy, make-believe world. We... we well, I guess I'd better get going. Good luck, Princess. Alfred, Betsy, get the bags down to the car. We're leaving immediately. Betsy, will you please hurry with Mrs. Dudley's coat? Well. Emma. And now, Emma, is this parade never going to stop? Emma is no parade. Oh, you did fine. You didn't just get married. You left the swellest guy in the world and went out and picked yourself that. The swellest guy in the world is married to his play, and he can have it. What play? He called it off. He... he called... when? Hours ago. Everybody in the cast was paid off with a bonus. But... well, it was... It was only because he knew definitely I wasn't going to play it. Only because he knew definitely he loves you. You're talking to my wife. You shut up. Did you hear that? He loves you, you dope. I congratulate you. I congratulate you for making a first-class botch of your whole life. <laughs> He, he just left here. Do you think you could find him? Anybody would know where to find him tonight. Yes. He's in Lindy's. They'll probably sweep him out in the morning. Well, then, Emma, look. Get to him. Get to him quickly, see? And give him this. He owes me $4.40, and I want it, see, on principle. Now, tell him to look at it and, and to study it well, and then write me a check immediately for it. Do you understand? Tonight. A measly $4 at a time like this? What's got into you? Oh, Emma, I've got to prove something. Just do it. Do exactly what I tell you. And don't let go until he's written that check, will you? Now, the amount is on the bill. And, oh, please, darling, put it right under his nose, won't Jane. you? Jane! Uh, Jane! Go on, hurry, hurry. Jane! Yes, William? Enough of this shilly-shallying around. Here, put your coat on. We're leaving for the hotel right now. Yes, William. Mr. William Dudley's reservation, please. Yes, Mr. Dudley. Suite 725. Got room for another mourner? Yeah. I just left Jane. She looked mighty pretty tonight, didn't she? Uh -huh. Luke? Write out a check for four dollars and forty cents. She wants it right now for this. How do you like that? Just shows you. She you cherish a woman, and all the time all she wanted was four dollars. Yeah. And forty cents. Oh. Um. 
William, what are you doing? What am I doing? Why, I'm holding my wife's hand. Yes, but so tightly. No court ever ruled how tightly to hold your wife's hand. No, that's left to the discretion of the individual. Well, William, what's come over you? I don't know. I don't know. William, William. Let's make a record. Make a what? A record. Oh. Say something, Jane. Oh, it, it, it's so silly. I... The health of the princess. Please, Lucius, write that check and get it over with. Oh, sure, sure. Anything for the princess. Eddie, what do I want? A drink. No, no, no. I want to do my play, right? Right. You're a liar. What do I want, Emma? You don't want to do your play. You're a smart girl. I want Jane. I want my wife. I want her more than all the plays in the world. All of them? I always knew what I wanted. When I was a kid, I wanted to grow up. And when I grew up, I wanted my wife. And then I wanted to make her a star. And you know why? Because she loves the theater. And I love my wife. Lucius, you better write that check before you forget it. Sure, sure, you know me. As good as done. Did we drink the health of the princess? No, it will. In a minute, we will. Mm. <laughs> this side of your character. Well, I haven't either. You know, Jane, it's love and it's wonderful. It's made a new man of me. In fact, it's made me a boy. <laughs> it's misrepresentation, William. That's what it is. Well, what's a little misrepresentation between man and wife? Stop it. Well, what's the matter? Stop it. I'm dizzy. That's what's the matter. I think I'd better get into something more comfortable. No, I think I'd better not. Uh, you, you sit down right here and uh, finish your ice cream. I, um, um, I, uh... I tell you what, fellas, I got a great idea. I'll tell you what we do. We'll, uh... Oh, yeah. Never felt worse. Good. Hmm? Huh? What do you think of my idea? Great. And? Great. Uh, what was it, pal? I didn't quite catch it. Let's travel. Get away from it all. What do you say? Swell. Well, we go. California. There you are. It's wonderful. You look for a place to go, and there it is. Right in front of you. Big as life. <laughs> Hilma, California. That's where I want to go. Hilma, where's that? Where? Well, it's on a map. Look on a map. Hey, wait a minute. There's a piece of California missing. Oh, that's bad. Come on, come on, fellas. Play fair. If you took a piece of California, give it back. Thought you could get away with it, didn't you? Honest, pal. No, no. Oh, yeah? Borderline gas station and auto camp. Borderline, California. Ten gallon, one night's lodging. Mr. and Mrs. Drake. Eddie, what's the matter? My wife. She's my wife. Sure, she's your wife, but she's Mr. Dudley's wife, too. <laughs> going? California. Didn't you hear him borrow a nickel? Oh, Lord. All aboard. All aboard. All aboard. Hello. Who? Mr. Drake calling Mrs. Dudley. 
She's not in. And, operator, don't ring this room again on any account, understand? And give me the room clerk. Get me Lindy's bar, quickly. Hello, this is Mr. Dudley in 725. There's apt to be a Mr. Lucius Drake trying to see Mrs. Dudley or me. No matter what he says, don't let him up. I understand, Mr. Dudley. And by the way, the man seems to be a crank of some sort. Shouldn't wonder if he's a little dangerous. Better keep a sharp eye on him if he comes around. Uh, yes, sir. Hello, Lindy's. Is, uh, is Emma Harper or Eddie Turner there? They've gone. Oh. Jane! Well, um, is Mr... Jane! Yes? <laughs> Jane, who do you think had the nerve to fall? I... I haven't the faintest idea, William. Luke. Where is he? Oh, don't be alarmed. I settled him. Uh, what did he want? What did he have to say? You don't suppose I'd talk to him. I just told him downstairs that he was crazy, and if he shows up, to treat him accordingly. Wasn't that clever of me? Uh, yes, yes, very clever, William. Very clever indeed. Hey, what's the William Dudley's room number? Who's calling, please? Mr. Drake. Uh, I'm sorry, but I can't give out that information. Come on, bud. Don't toy with me. What's their room number? I would advise that you leave immediately and quietly. Otherwise, I shall have to... I see. Thank you very much. Hey, look, I'm checking out early in the morning. I'd like to have my bill now, please. Yes, sir. What's your room number, please? Uh, oh, that's funny. I, I can't remember. Uh, look it up, will you? I'm William Dudley. You're in 725. You are... Phil! Mike! That's the man! Why, what... You kid! What are you... Mr. Dudley does not wish to be disturbed. Come on. Mr. Dudley doesn't wish to be disturbed. About that technicality, William, were you and Mr. Eccles certain? Oh, who cares about a technicality? Why, you do, William Dudley, and don't lie. That was the old William Dudley. I told you I'm a new man, the new William Dudley. And call me Bill. housekeeper. Hello, this is 725. Say, what kind of a hotel is this? The sheets haven't been changed, there aren't any towels, and the tub is dirty. We'll get right up here. Would you give me your room service, please? Hello, room service. Uh, this is Mr. Dudley in 725. Would you send up six chicken din uh, make that eight chicken dinners right away. Give me the plumber, please. Hello, plumber. Say, uh, this is 725. The pipes up here are making a racket to wake the dead. Get right up here. Right. Give me the electrician, please. Beautiful night. Oh, wait, William, there, there's another technicality. A big one. Oh, and... my darling, my poor baby. She's upset. Well, William, you must listen to me. You know, I must have the whip. Hold on. What is this? Well, you said your bathtub was dirty, didn't you? My what? Come on, Susie. I put clean towels in there this morning. Yes, leave those beds alone. What are you doing? I got here as quick as I could, sir. Who asked for you? I'll have those pipes fixed in a minute. What? What do you want? What are you doing here? Why, I'm the electrician. I'm fixing your switch. Fixing? What sort of a hotel is this? Hey, hey, stop that pounding! Well, the room is swarming with bugs. Uh, yeah, bugs. Well, send someone up here right away. What do you want? 
a crap game on at 725. Everybody invited. Oh, 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 I told you I didn't call anybody. Now get out. Get out. You two. Out. Out. Where are you going? Following your order, sir. Take your hands off those things. Put them down. Do you hear me? Put them down. Now, get out. All right, what's this? Bug. Sorry to disturb, mister. We'll be through in about an hour. Stop. Stop right where you are. Stop, I say. Now, every last one of you. Get out. Are we going to have My night to howl, kiddo. Take your hands off my wife. Get away from her. You're only your husband. Quick. Room 725, it's a riot, a riot! Come on, man. All right, seventh floor. Seventh floor. Uh, room uh, 625? This is Mr. Dudley in 725. I wish you'd stop making all that racket down there. I'm making a racket. That riot up there woke me up. Why, you big baboon? You lie through your false teeth. If you call me that again, I'll come up there and bust your jaw. Why, you big baboon? You lie through your false teeth. Okay, you ask for it. Uh, no potatoes, they're fat. Throw all of those ruffians out. Come on, man. Yes, for years, never a ripple, happy as larks. And why? Because it was give and take, seeing the other's point of view. When you're in love, you're happy to do it. Just look at all we built that way. And I keep asking myself, how do we get into a spot like this? Princess, we're both wrong. Now, don't jump. Let me show you why. We made some nice, romantic plans. Eh? But look what happens when we try to make them work. I get head up about a play. I can't help it. And you say, the devil with it. Blow hot or cold, we've got to go bury ourselves in a farm for years and years because we planned it that way. Well, that makes you a little wrong. Oh, I knew I'd be wrong. 
Well, now, take me. Why am I wrong? Because I say, don't want any part of that farm. Plans or no plans. Won't spend a day on it. Bam, right into the next show. Well, that makes me plenty wrong. Well? Well, we want both things. So what do two intelligent people do in a situation like this? They decide to give and take, like they always did. They compromise. Because I know one thing. Whatever we do, we've got to do it together. on the wrong floor. I moved upstairs, you done. What do you know? Habit. Our old apartment. But look, what are you doing? Are you crazy? Just take a peek. You can't walk into oh, someone yeah. else's. You can't go barging into yeah, someone else's can. apartment. Want a little peek? I don't peek? want to take a little peek. I want to get out of here. I, I... Anyway, there's one thing you didn't get out of that auction. You mean this? Why, look, you, you stole that out of my apartment. Just to make everything complete. Oh, you fool. You crazy idiot. Janie. <laughs> yes. I could get the farm back, too. Oh, you could. Supposing it isn't for sale? Well, why wouldn't it be? Because I won't sell it. You... You... That's right. Well, darling, have you got a copy of the play? The play? What are you talking about? Well, we have to compromise, don't we? Now, don't be silly. Come on, let's go to work. No, 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 I won't have it that way. No, 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 there'll be no play, and I have no copy of it. I, did, I, I, did, I destroyed every why, one of... Why, here's one. Well, what do you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a smash hit, Eddie. It'll run five years. Ladies and gentlemen, this will have the shortest run of any of Mr. Drake's plays. No, no, no. Five years. It will be closed in the early spring by an act of God. And I'm sure Mr. Drake hopes it will be a boy. Oh.